Right, good morning. We're back on the job. And uh, first job is gonna be to do all the layout. You can just about make out the trench there that goes along and that curves in and out. But as well as that, I want to bring the, the wall up and down in height. Um, so what I'm doing at the moment, I'm not gonna cut each one individually. I'm gonna cut them into brackets of three heights. So there's gonna be a bunch of 800 mil tool 600 mil tool and 900 mil tool. I'll do all of my 800s first, so I should get three per length. So I'm just going to line it all out with the framing square, so it's all ready to go. So I'm just having a look at methodology of cutting these and this is really not that far off. Gets me about two thirds of the way through. I mean the ideal route to go would be to get a bigger, bigger circular saw, but I think because it's not we're not doing any joinery as such, the cuts don't need to be perfectly square. And I'd rather just go through in one cut. So the chainsaw is probably the best route, but this is potentially a bit easier and quieter. I'll probably do a few test cuts just to see if it's worth doing. Right, so initial test with the circular saw. Uh, not too bad, but it's a bit hit and miss. My saw is really not great for cutting square. Uh, as much as you can tweak it and change the, the base plate, it's still not that accurate. But this one here, there's no stepping at all. That's, I've come in two passes on one side, single pass on the other side, that was fine. Here you can see that stepping. How well the blade holds up will be a different story. But now I'm gonna try the uh, chainsaw on the next oak. So the next two cuts I'm gonna do with the chainsaw. Now of course the circular saw is gonna be a clean, straighter cut. So, but the chainsaw is surprisingly not too bad at all, and we can get it in one part. They're definitely landscape grade. This one's got a hefty split down it. So the verdict is it's not going to be as good as the circular saw as expected. Right, I did another little bit of a test um, in that I wanted to chamfer the corners, but rather than mess around with the router, use that electric planer. And although it's a fairly budget tool, it's done the job okay, and these are going to be quite rustic anyway. That's taken all the edges off, and of course if there's any wany edge, like a natural edge, on some of these, for instance here, I'll face that to the back anyway, but if there are any, you can disguise it quite easily by putting the chamfer on there. Um, and again, at the top, I've done the same, just to ease all those corners. I'm not gonna go overboard on sanding and planing. Once they're in uh, and all concreted in, I'm just gonna run some 80 grit and then 120 over everything just to soften it up. up told you it's gonna be a hot day so I'm about a third of the way through and I've got most of my 800 mil uh, tall ones done what I'm gonna do now before I lose my kind of sensible height workstation here I'm gonna bring all those back up and plane the edges get all those finished and I might even go and dry fit them over there just temporarily 
So far so good, circular saw all the way now. I've managed to square it up so it's, it's pretty accurate. I'll show you how I'm doing each piece. So I'm taking the cut piece then just checking for the best end. Sometimes it's one I've cut, sometimes it's a sawmill kind of factory end. So that's my end there. Um, and then I'm doing the using the planer to take off all the edges first, then scooting around the top. Um, and then I'm gonna stick them over and dry fit them to give me an idea of the kind of heights that I need. And then we've obviously got just a nice finished edge. Now it's much quicker than using the router. And for those of you who haven't got a planer, these are so cheap, these kind of Chinese unbranded ones. Um, I'll put a link th in the description to something similar to this or even this model and it, you can see it's got a groove down the middle there and that allows you to line that up on the corner it gives you a, an approximate 45 degree chamfer and it's perfectly fine you know it's close enough for this sort of work um, and just 10 times quicker than using the router. It's worth mentioning these most oak sleepers that um, come into the country are landscape grade which are almost like the rejects to construction grade oak or structural oak um, most of them are pretty square and don't have much wane or natural edge on them this one as you can see here has a little bit of the bark left on it that's no problem because that would be the bit we hide anyway but it is worth just stripping all this off because um, from what I believe, you know, as soon as there's bark or any of that sort of um, kind of pithy bit left on there, that can start the rot process with insects and stuff. I mean, it, this is hardly anything, but whilst I've got the plane, I'm just cleaning all that off. Actually, the worst one of the lot, but it just gives you an idea, you know, just to get rid of that. This will be hidden but at least we know it's going to last a little bit longer, hopefully. A Makita saw is, I mean, it's not that old, but it's over 10 years old and it's just a, a little trooper. Uh, the blade in it is, again, like five years old. I haven't used it that much because I use the cordless one, but um, it's having no problem. Just three passes, so it's pretty quick. Oh, I'm sh I swear I always pick the hottest days to work in gardens. So I've planed all of the corners now. We've got some 600 up to, uh, I think a meter of my tallest ones. All the edges are um, being planed and all the tops are nice and flat. So I'm now gonna do a bit of a dry fit. I think I've almost got enough there to do the whole run, uh, but I've got six sleepers left. Two of them gonna, are gonna be used whole at that end. And then I've got a shorter run to do down this side. Um, so I think before I start cutting any more, it's a good idea to kind of just see how things work. I'm gonna to have to wedge them with bricks and things to see if I can prop them up a bit. You can see this like characteristic checking of the ends of the oak. Uh, that's perfectly normal. And, and actually because those are running the length of the grain, they don't really affect the structure of it. Um, but aesthetics wise it lends itself more to like a rustic look. Time to grin and bear the heat and do a dry fit.
definitely struggling with the heat now. <laughs> Such a pansy. I'm almost there actually. I think I've got about a metre and a half left to cut. Now those ones can be shorter because they're kind of round the, round the corner and this, the gradient goes up anyway. So for now they're just kind of propped and bricks and all sorts there to hold it in place. But I'll try and get regular intervals so it kind of goes up and down a bit more smoothly. And of course everything will be plumb and I'll be putting some steel strapping on the back. It should be completely hidden and it's more just for the construction phase. I'll, I'll you know, uh, just tack them all in place really using that steel band and then once they're all backfilled with concrete um, that'll be doing the job. Uh, so the strapping is almost going to be just there for the construction part and so it'll almost be a second hand for me. Okay, we're on the home straight, I think. Just cut these eight little stubby ones. They are 300 mil tall. And I'll probably need to do the same amount again. And that's going to do this lower terrace. So, it's, I mean, they're only gonna be, uh, I guess, 150 to 200 mil above the ground. But they'll kind of tie into here and follow their own little curve round. You can see over on the back wall there, there's concrete panels at the bottom of the fence, so I can go up a good bit higher. Whereas down here, there's only a six inch gravel board, so that's why I'm not going any higher than that. So obviously we've got issues with the fence panels rotting otherwise. I'm gonna do another eight of the short ones. With these ones, it's much easier to take the edges off first, plane it as one length and then cut. Just make sure you do pencil markings first because it's easier to get the square edge on there. Then I'm going to cut them all at half depth first. Then we'll go full depth. to think that when you look at it like that, that all that work that I've done on planing the edges, squaring the tops, and I will be sanding them, it's probably a lost cause because from here you don't really see any of that. And there's a good chance that no one's ever going to walk up there and see it. You know, if you're going to be sitting on them like, or they're right outside your house, um, then put more, you know, put more effort into it. Well, at least I know it's been done right, but um, there are quicker ways to do this. You could just use the chainsaw, cut them, fit them, let them age, and kind of get, get all nice and gray and rustic. This is more of a finished way of doing it, I guess. Uh, you know, by easing all those edges. Right, they're all done. When they're all like that, there's nothing more satisfying than working with wood, is there? I mean, they're all just solid. They're gonna last for years. They'll be done properly, and with a little bit of sanding and finish, they're hopefully gonna look the part. They just sound great, too. Right, last job for the dry fit for today's job really is to put the two remaining sleepers 
uh, over there against the fence post. They're just going to be on their sides. They're not going to be visible. Uh, so it made sense to just have them attached to the fence post, which I've concreted in quite a bit deeper than needed so that they're fine for retaining soil. And, uh, and this from 20 sleepers. This is our bit of wastage. Not bad. And we might even end up using it because I'm about six inches off that end wall so might even need a little uh, block in there so I'd say that the vertical doing them vertically especially if you can cut within multiples of the 2.4 meter lengths or whatever length sleepers you basically end up with no wastage so it's um it's a good way to go right let's see if we can lug these over with whatever energy I've got left So there's about 70 or 80 components now, all cut, prepped, dry fitted. Um, pretty pleased with how it's come out. It's quite hard to get those gradients um, kind of gradual enough with a dry fit without having the gravel below. But I'll give you a look at what it looks like in. I'll put those two sleepers at the far end just to finish off against the fence and all the short ones are in now. So pretty chuffed. Do you know what, my tools perform well today for once. So um, if you want any info on the tools I use, I'll put them all linked in the description box below or something that's very close to what I've got. So I don't think we could have fit much more into today. We've got everything done that I wanted to get done. And the next video in this project will be, of course, getting them all, uh, well, getting them all out again and then getting the concrete mixed up, everything, and uh, strapping them all together, getting them all looking good. So that's it for now. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.